Hey there, and welcome to Stitches. I'm Brittany, and this is another video designed to help you celebrate your me time and deepen your relaxation while you craft, whether that's crochet, knit, sewing, quilting, or something else entirely. The goal of today's video is to help you feel more comfortable and relaxed in your body while you craft. Today, you're gonna meet Rena, and Rena has created a series of stretches designed specifically for crafters. These stretches are great to do before you sit down to craft or to take a little break during an extended crafting session. And if you've never done yoga before, don't worry. These simple little stretches are designed for anyone to do. And in fact, they're designed to do while you're actually seated in your chair. I love this routine because it helps me stretch out and open up my shoulders, which I often slouch over while crafting. It stretches out my hands and just helps me feel a little bit more mobile, gives me a perk in energy and relaxes me in my body. So with that said, let's get into these yoga stretches created just for us crafters. Hello crafters, I'm Rena, and I'm excited for today's video because we are specifically creating and crafting this video for us crafters. So the exercises are going to take all that into consideration in terms of your body positionings and repetitive movements to, kind of, to do the opposite and to start strengthening and feel good and relieve pressure and tension and stress from wherever you're holding it. So. Remember to go at your own pace. This is for all levels. If you've never done yoga before, who cares? This is just to make you feel good and some movements and some stretching. So let's do this together. Uh, we're gonna start by sitting comfortably, sitting up straight. If you cannot sit straight, then you want to grab a cushion because sometimes the couches or the chairs make a slouch and sometimes our own body positioning does. So we're gonna grab a pillow and sit on the edge of it. So half of it's on and half of it's off. I'll show you like this, there you go. And you're gonna keep your feet hip width apart on the floor with your feet flat if possible to support the spine. And if you already notice some slouching, try to lift yourself up, beautiful. So we're gonna actually learn a cooling breath. So sometimes if we're been doing a repetitive motion and we're on the couch and we're you know slouched over and we're with all the blankets it can get a little bit hot so we're going to actually cool down our bodies and we're going it's gonna it's it's, it's a it's called sitali but in layman's terms it's taco breath but it's not because you ate a taco so don't worry so we're gonna curl our tongue like this now some people genetically can't do this but they can flip it under so it looks like this uh-huh, under the top teeth. And you're gonna inhale through the mouth and then exhale through the nose in that positioning. So curl the tongue in whichever way your body can do it. And you can laugh at yourself, it's all good. Take a deep breath in. And then close your mouth and breathe through the nose out. And you probably noticed on the breath in, it should feel cool, a cooling breath. Close the mouth and breathe out through the nose. Don't have too much pressure if you can't quite get it. Let's try a few more times. Beautiful, one more time. And breathe out through the nose. Ah, wonderful. You probably feel a little bit cooler in your mouth right now. So that's a little tip for you. Whenever you need to cool yourself down, you know what to do. You don't have to change the air conditioning, but you could do that too. All right, so we're going to make, we're gonna look from side to side with our head so we can stretch out our neck a little bit. So look to the right as you inhale, exhale center. Inhale left. Exhale, center, keep up straight. Inhale, right. Exhale, center. Inhale, left. Exhale, center. This is really important because sometimes our neck gets stuck in one position when we're crafting and we want to create that range of motion. Let it know it's okay to move in different directions. Beautiful. Now we're going to go side to side. We're going to bring our right ear to the right shoulder, right hand over the head, stretch that right side of our neck. Breathing deeply. And back to the center, other side. Left ear to the left shoulder, left hand over the head, pull the right shoulder down, stretch that right side of the neck. Breathe into it, again, to change the range of motion of the neck from being in one position for too long. And come back to the center, beautiful. Now we're gonna grab our hand and we're gonna pull our chin up and create a stretch. Just go gently, not too much pressure, but just enough to create that stretch in the front of the neck here because it's probably been pressing into our chest for quite a while, right? And then gently coming down. 
All right, now we're going to move our spine a little bit. Bring the right hand behind your back, left hand on top of the right knee. Now, the right hand can either grab the back of the couch, the chair, whatever feels good, or right by your side, and just turn the torso looking over the right shoulder. It doesn't have to go too too much over to the right, whatever feels good for you. I tend to tell people to find a six or seven stretch out of 10 so that it's not too intense, but it's just enough that you feel something. So find your six or seven out of 10. Come back to the center and let's switch sides. Left hand behind the back, right hand over the left knee and twist, look over that left shoulder. Breathe into the left side of the body. You're doing great. Good. Especially since again, our spine set, tends to get into one position for a long period of time, letting it know it's okay. Take the breaks you need to and you can do one of these poses or all of them whenever you need to. Coming back to the center and we're gonna come into a lateral stretch now, moving our spine in another direction, bringing the right arm down and your left arm over. Now, if your left arm doesn't go too far over, it doesn't matter. Make it more about the side stretch and modify according to you, you're doing great. It doesn't have to look like anything in particular except for what it looks like on you, expressing yourself through your own body. And then actually what we're going to do is we're going to bring this left arm in front. We're going to do a little bit of like a half circle here and then go to the other side. There you go. Moving your spine gently, just a gentle movement here. Good. Breathing deeply for three, two, and one. Come back in front. Make a little half circle. You're doing great. Over to the side just for one count. Dynamic movements here we're going to make. Back and forth gently. You don't have to go as low as I'm going. Even if it looks like whatever you're doing, it's perfect. This is amazing. Good job. That's it. Side to side. And then coming back to the center. All right, now we're going to stretch out our hips a little bit and our legs. So you're going to bring your left leg a little bit forward and you're going to either bring your right ankle on top of your left ankle or if you can get your right knee, right ankle on top of the left knee, go for it. If not, you can bring it lower down depending on what your body can do. Again, it's perfect just the way that it is. So you're here and you're going to bring that knee down, push the right knee down gently, even if your ankle's ankles on top of the other ankle, push that knee out. And then from this position, remember you're still trying to sit up straight. You're going to bend forward. Now bending forward might not be in the cards for your hips or your spine today. And that's perfectly fine. You're doing great. If you can bend forward, bend forward and do what feels right for you. Taking three deep breaths, breathe into that right hip. So you should feel this all along the piriformis, the hips right on the right side and the glutes. One more full breath here. We're trying to undo all of that tension that we created from sitting for a long period of time in one position, creating that range of motion in the hip, coming back up, bringing that right knee in front. And you're just going to let the hip go out and in, knee out and in to create a little bit more range of motion there. Just start to get some circulation in those muscles. Good. And then we're going to switch sides. So your left ankle can go on top of your right ankle. Option A, you can bring it up higher, or if you can get the ankle on top of the knee, Fine too, it's all perfect, great, wonderful job crafters. And then you're going to forward fold if your spine and hips can handle it. If you already feel a stretch here, six out of seven out of 10, you don't need to go any further. So let's hold here four deep breaths, really opening that hip, noticing maybe if you tend to lean on one side more often when you're doing your crafting, and then maybe that other side's neglected or it's tightened. So we're just kind of trying to undo, open that up, stretch it out, make it feel good, make it feel tended to. Three more breaths. You're doing great. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Two deep breaths. You got this. And one. Slowly coming up. And you're going to bring that foot down. And you're going to shake that knee in and out a little bit to, to loosening, up, loosening up that hip a little bit more. Beautiful job. Okay, now we're going to do another dynamic stretch. So you're going to bring your feet a little wider than hip width apart. 
All right. We're going to come into a forward bend. So your chest is going to go between your thighs. If it does not reach between the thighs, doesn't matter. It's just the intention, but we first need to sit up straight. So if you need to make sure you're sitting on that cushion tall, so the pelvis is tilted forward, do that first. With the feet wider than the hips, you're going to hinge your hips and come forward. And this is as, if you can go this far, great. If you can't, great. If you can go further, great. If you can bring the arms down towards the floor, do that as well. But without feeling any strain. So we want to keep the spine straight and try not to round the back when you do that because then we're just giving in to the movement we've been doing for a while. We're trying to undo that nice, the rounding of the spine by straightening it out and bringing the chest forward as we go down. Breathing deeply. Three deep breaths. Feel that stretch in the hips and in the back, releasing pressure from the back that may be from holding a position for too long. Keep that belly drawn in to support the spine and the back muscles engaged. And one coming up now. And we're going to now we're going to arch the back and look up. So we're not making it dynamic just yet. We're going to combine both of these movements. Hands on the knees. You're using your hands to lift the chest. So I'm going to show you from the side here that you're going to arch and lift the chest again, undoing all that rounding, which is so important. And you can do this anytime you need to during when you're crafting time, whatever feels right for you. Good. For a few breaths. And now we're going to combine those two movements. If you notice, for the most part, the spine stays the same. We're just going to be hinging at the hips up and down. And we're going to combine it with the breath. Here we go. All right. There we go. Nice and slow. Here we go. So you're going to take a deep breath. Inhale here. Exhale, hinge. Inhale up. Keep arching. Exhale, hinge. Inhale back up. You can go slower if you need to. Exhale, hinge. Taking it easy, no rushing. Inhale up, keep squeezing those shoulder blades together behind you. Exhale, hinge. Inhale, arch. Exhale, hinge. Good job. And you're gonna make little circles with your spine now. So make the circles gentle in one direction towards the right. Keeping the back, you're imagining your back is arching. Even if it's not arching much, you're feeling that it's arching. And now you're gonna switch directions of the circle here. There you go. Gentle little circles, doesn't have to be fast, but just again, increasing your circulation here, range of motion, enjoying these movements. Ooh, the body's moving, there we go. One more circle here. And coming back to the center. Okay, we're gonna stand up now, we're gonna use our balancing skills. So from seated, our muscles tend to kind of go into atrophy a little bit if we're sitting for a long time. So we're actually going to try to strengthen them. And we're going to bring our hands to our hips or arms out to the side if you need more balance. You're going to shift your weight into your left leg and your right toe can be in front. If you need to balance here, if this is as far as you can do balance wise, great. Good job. Push the floor away, pull the belly in and one pointed focus, and if you can, lift up the right knee, right? That's option two. You don't have to, you can get, catch the right knee with the right hand if you like, or keep the toe on the floor. Let's take three more breaths. That left leg is starting to burn and go, ooh, we're using some muscles here. Two, of course, if you have any kind of condition that you need to modify for, please do so. One more breath here. Keep the crown of the head reaching up tall. And then open up the knee to the right. So you can keep the toe touching the floor like this, or you keep that knee elevated, looking at one spot in front of you. It doesn't matter if the foot's on or off the floor. What matters is your focus. So keep your eyes looking at one spot. Keep the strength in the standing leg. Try not to collapse into that hip. Push that foot into the floor. Look how much taller I got. Good. Nobody know, would know that I'm so short. And then bring the leg back to the front and bring that right leg down. Ooh and shake out those legs. Left thigh burning. Good. And let's switch sides. So you're shifting the weight into the right leg and the left leg is going to come in front. Toe touching here to the floor. Look at one spot that's not moving. Again, we're using these muscles because they've been relaxing for a little bit too long. So we're trying to make it a little bit, wake up those muscles and get stronger for better support. You can also lift the knee up and grab the knee with the hand. Look at one spot that's not moving. Woo, trying not to fall, stay focused. Pull the belly in, push the floor away from you. Two more deep breaths. Wherever you are is perfect. And one, you're gonna open up the leg to the side. 
Keep looking at that one spot in front of you. Remember, the toe can be on the floor or it can come up. Either way, everybody's feeling that right thigh burning and super strong. So that's what's important. Three deep breaths. Pull the navel in. You got this. Two deep breaths. And one coming back to the center and then lowering that left leg down and shaking it out. Whew. What a great job. Remembering that you can do one of these poses at any time that you need a break or all of the poses if they help you. Check in with yourself to know what do you need at any certain time. Is your body, or have you gotten so immersed in the work that you haven't even noticed that your neck is cringing, right? That you need to take a time to just soften and breathe. Be aware of it. Check in with your body. Be kind to your body. And thank you so much for joining me. I'm Rena, and we bring our hands in front and we say the light within me honors and loves the light within you. Namaste. Hello again. Did you enjoy doing those simple little stretches? I love that these stretches are designed for us crafters. And no matter what your comfort level is with yoga or stretching, it's something we can all do to just feel a little bit more comfortable in our body and allow us to enjoy that time that we take for ourselves crafting a little bit more. Let me know in the comments below. Did you enjoy celebrating your me time with a little bit of stretching and yoga for crafters today? Let me know.